Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you for joining me for another midweek video. Today I'm going to take you along as I make some fruity embeds using some melt and pour. So what I've got here at the moment is just some of the Stevenson's clear no sweat melt and pour. And I'm just chopping it up into some little cubes to get started. And then I'm going to very gently melt them down in the microwave using short 20 to 30 second bursts. Okay, so that has been melting down. We've still got a few little chunks in here, but I'm just going to let the heat from the actual glass jug and the rest of the soap to gently melt that down so that we don't end up overheating our soap. So we'll just give that a bit of a stir and then I'm going to add in some colours. So that has all melted down really nicely and the first lot of embeds we're going to make are some raspberries. Now I've got this pinky sil silicon mould which I made myself and I'll leave a link to the video where I showed you how I make the moulds using pinky sil. I'm just going to sit it on top of a tray so that we can then end up moving it around a little bit. What I'm going to do with my melt and pour in here, I am going to use some raspberry soda and a little bit of desire mica to try and get a really nice raspberry colour because quite often the raspberry colour as you get are uh, this real pink shade but in reality um, raspberries actually are quite red as well in color so just going to add a bit of that one in and then just a tiny amount of this desire just to try and get that more ready sort of shade I'm going to gently mix it in so we don't cause too many bubbles um, to happen in our melt and pour. I'm just going to add a little bit more of this Desire Mica because it's still a little bit too pink for my liking. Okay, I'm much happier with this colour I've got. I'm just going to give this a quick spritz on the top just to break any of the bubbles I did cause. You can also see I still have a couple of lumps of mica there so we'll just stir that in a little bit more and then we are right to start pouring. So I also want some blueberries to go on the top of this soap so I'm going to use some of the opaque melt and pour to do these ones. Reasons being between swapping between the different melt and pours is that your raspberries tend to be quite translucent, um, they're not so dense in colour so I thought we'll use the clear one just to try and get that really shiny look about them. Blueberries tend to be a little bit more denser in their sort of appearance so by using the white melt and pour it will end up looking a lot more solid in colour. So I'm just going to get this one chopped up and once again I'll melt it down in short 20 to 30 second bursts. Okay so this is now all melted down and is ready to start adding colours. So the first colour I'm going to add in is some blueberry delight mica. So we'll just pop a bit of that in here and because blueberries tend to have that sort of um, frosted shine to them I am also going to add in here just a little bit of silver lake mica as well just to get that real frosty look to them and it also tones down that blueberry color blueberries really aren't this bright blue that we all sort of um, allocate that color to they usually are that frosty sort of bluey color almost a grey blue. Alright so now that's all mixed in I'm going to give it a quick spray with some rubbing alcohol just to burst the bubbles and again when you burst those bubbles you can see clumps of mica that may have been hidden in those bubbles so just give it another gentle stir to break those little clumps up and we're going to pull this one into our next mould so if we pull this tray back in. The mould I'm using again is another one that I've made using pinky sill and this one is my blueberry mould. So line that one up on there and I'm popping them on the tray so I can actually easily move the moulds around without disturbing the soap as it's setting. So I'm just going to now start pouring these little cavities. Can pop them aside and we'll start working on the next fruit that's going to go on top of this soap. 
Okay, so those sort of fruity molds were very, very easy to do. We simply melted down, melt and pour, coloured it and poured it. This time we're actually going to build a fruit shape because I don't have any molds to give me the completed one. So I'm just going to melt down some of this white melt and pour and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we are melted down on our white melt and pour here and what I'm going to do is just add the tiniest amount of firefly marker in here. I'm actually not after yellow, I'm after more of a creamy sort of um, colour to go in the this particular part of my fruit. Oops. So I'll just give that a little bit of a stir. And this is going to be basically a two-step process to create what we want to do. Okay, so now that that is all melted down and it's the right colour for me, we're going to do the first part of this fruit. So in my container here, I have one of these silicon moulds in the circle shape. Um, and I am just going to very simply pour this straight down into the middle and let it set up. Oops. So it's going to, probably going to take about 20 minutes to set up and then we can come back and do the next part. Okay, so we are back and this one has set up, so we're going to get this cylinder one out and it's just a matter of simply peeling it apart. Now if I was using this for something else, I'd be a little bit more fussy and start to trim some of that up, but we're actually going to do some extra bits to this soap and that's just going to really add to the whole effect. So what I have here is just a little um, icing tool that I've had out of some cheap set that I've had. It's just got a, a nice little pointy sorty sort of end and all I'm going to do is start oh, running my tool just down and it doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be even I'm just trying to get it nice and deep so that when we do the next part we will end up with some of the melt and pour going into these grooves and that will just add to the effect of what we're after so I'm just going to keep going all the way around and just getting all this excess off So I took my gloves off to do this bit because I find um, when the, this is still a little bit warm and if I was to be um, handling it with gloves it just sticks to me and it just it doesn't really work as well because I don't have as much control to be able to move it and things. Just going around making sure that these are as deep as I can get them without completely ruining it. I'm just going to dust all this off and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that I've done that, I've just popped my gloves back on. I'm just going to grab my tray here. And what I've got is like a little um, muffin cupcake silicon mould. I'm just going to measure how high. Just place that in the centre. Measure how high it is. So I'm just going to put my knife on the edge and just mark where the top of my cylinder is. And I didn't quite make the mould the mark deep enough. All right, and then I'm just going to chop this up into little pieces. And that should be more than enough for what I'm hoping to achieve here. I'm just going to pop them into the middle. It doesn't matter if they're slightly taller than the mould or slightly um, smaller because we're going to chop all these up in the end anyway. We might just do one more. May as well fill up the whole mould. I may just have to do a little bit more of the other melt and pour. What I've got in my little jug here, I've already melted down some of the clear no sweat melt and pour. What I'm going to add into this is just a drop of liquid green colorant because I want quite a deep green but I don't want to add too much mica into it because the mica will make it a lot more dense in color whereas the um, liquid will actually leave it quite a see-through color. Now that's looking like a really nice color there to me. Now I'm also going to add in just a little amount of poppy seeds not too much because this isn't for exfoliation it, this is just for appeal so I'm going to add that in there now because I've added poppy seeds in here if I was to pour this now at its current temperature which is where is my thermometer here it is if I was to pour this now which is sitting at 67 68 degrees or about 153 um, Fahrenheit all those poppy seeds was actually sink down to the bottom 
of my mold. So I'm just going to leave this sit here for a few moments and get it to come to about under that sort of 50 degrees Celsius. So it's still fluid enough to pour, but it should suspend all of those poppy seeds as well. Okay, this has cooled right down to about 51 degrees. It is starting to actually um, set back up on the top, so I'm going to give it a quick stir here, and we're going to start pouring. So have you already guessed what fruit we're making? I am attempting to make something that looks a little bit like kiwi fruit for the top of this soap. So you can always take different shapes and start building them together to create other sort of um, images that you may have. What I'm going to do is give this a quick spritz with some rubbing alcohol. I'm almost empty on my bottle here. Let's get that fixed. There it is. And that's just going to help the two layers of melt and pour to actually stick together. And I'm just going to start pouring into my mould. Now because we are pouring at such low temperatures, hopefully some of those poppy seeds will actually float. And it's just more to give that sort of illusion that we've got some of the seeds. Now I don't think I'm going to get all six of these poured out from this jug. But I probably actually don't really need all six. So what I'll do is go and melt some more uh, melt and pour and finish filling these up. And then we'll come back and we'll start on moulding. Alright, so let's get to unmoulding some of these embeds. I have taken my gloves off and washed my hands really well because I find it much easier to do this without the gloves on. I'm just going to bend my mould back just a little bit to start loosening some of these. All these little extra bits that I've got stuck up on the top, I just peel them off and then, we'll just grab the other jug, I pop them back into the jug so that we can put them in for the next lot of meltdown. If they don't come straight off here, then I just get my knife to them once I've popped the raspberries out and I trim them down. So let's start getting some of this off and then we'll start popping these straight out. So they're all popped out now and they're looking really good. The, that mould picks up really fine details of the raspberries and using that clear um, one they, you get that sort of look that raspberries do have. For those of them that still have like those little edgy bits on them I just grab a small paring knife and just very very carefully I'm trying to make sure I keep my thumb out the way is just trim off all these extra bits and I pop them into my jug ready for melting down. So let's go and get the blueberries and I'll tidy them up a little bit later. So I have a bit of a confession to make with the blueberries. I had to re-pour them because when I first took them out of the mould they were a real pale grey and they weren't quite the colour of blueberries that I was after. So I took them out of the mould and then I melted it back down and added some more of that blueberry mica. What I'm going to do on this one is just slide my knife underneath and just start to lift some of this excess up, being sure not to dig my knife into the mould. And again, all this extra I'm just popping back in my jug so I can melt them down uh, for the next lot I'm going to pour. Now I only recommend running your knife along the edge of your moulds like this if you have actually got good knife skills. I used to do a lot of paper toll when I was a lot younger, a lot of card making as well and I learned very quickly how to use and manipulate one of those exacto or craft knives so I tend to be able to do this sort of thing without digging into my moulds. If I didn't have that sort of background I'd be sitting here and actually peeling them off by hand. But I'll just finish getting this one cleaned up and then we'll start popping our blueberries out. Okay, so I have now got all of those out of there. You can see they have that kind of frosty shine that blueberries get. And again, you can see the absolute detail that the... Um, the pinky seal actually picked up off of the blueberries when I made the mould. So let's take a look at what our kiwi fruits look like. So I'm going to grab this one out of here, just going to push it straight up. That is kind of what it is looking like at the moment. You can see because we poured this at 
quite a low temperature those poppy seeds are scattered all throughout that piece of soap there so I'm going to pop that onto my cutting tray here so I don't mark my bench and I'm actually going to probably cut them maybe in half so we get some nice chunky pieces of kiwi fruit and then we'll just trim the back of this piece off to make it nice and flush and because we put all those grooves into the um, that piece of yellowish melt and pour when you look at the kiwi it has that sort of white creamy center and then everything sort of starbursts off the edge and that just kind of gives it that little bit of a starburst effect so now what I'm going to do is grab my kiwis and I'm going to cut each of these pieces probably into six so we'll cut them in half and then cut each of those halves into thirds. So we'll cut that one up as well because I don't want these are obviously much bigger than what a kiwi fruit would be and those other fruits have been based off of real fruit so they are the correct size. These are going to be a little bit big in comparison but you can now see we have some really nice pieces of kiwi fruit. Now just to finish the edge off of each of these um, kiwi fruits, I have a little bit of mocha mica here and I've just taken a paintbrush and I am going to just paint the very edge of this to give it that brown um, skin to it and I'm just painting my mica straight on here. I find if I were to put alcohol with it and paint on it I get in far more mess okay so i've finished popping that on and it's really finished the kiwi fruit off it's given that edge of the kiwi fruit if we just grab a second piece as well you can see the actual difference putting that uh, mica on the edge that's still quite bright and clear whereas putting that um, mocha on the very edge it's darkened it up and it gives it a little bit more um, texture so i'm going to keep getting these ones cut up and dusted with some mica So I just want to share with you, I've just discovered an even quicker way of getting the edges of the kiwi fruits um, in that brown mica. All I've done is I've put about a teaspoon of that mocha into the top of the lid and now I'm just rolling the edge of the soap through it and just giving it a quick little blow to get rid of the excess from off it. It means I can get them done quicker and with less mess um, and it's also less wastage as well. So we have got a couple of other bits of fruit that I am planning to use on Saturday soap. I have got some strawberries and again I made the mould for these ones too and these were fashioned off locally grown strawberries. So they will go onto the soap. And I also have from the pineapple sangria soap I have a couple of these pineapple pieces left over. So I'm going to trim them down and get them to the right size to go on the top of this soap and they will appear as well. I hope you have enjoyed watching how I make my fruit slices for Saturday soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will certainly get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you are new around here and you haven't yet subscribed, why not go and hit that subscribe button if you're keen to see what Saturday's video is. And if you hit the little bell, it will let you know when that Saturday video is uploaded. So thank you so much for watching and until Saturday, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you then. Bye.